Our next exploration in the concept of electron jumps in the orbits around the nuclei of atoms, we're now going to look at something a little bit more complicated. Instead of hydrogen, we're now going to look at helium. And a helium atom, of course, is a little bit different. It has two protons in the nucleus along with two neutrons. And so therefore, the energy levels contain a greater amount of energy, or the energy well, so to speak, is greater in these atoms than it is for hydrogen. So to find the energy of the various levels, the various orbits that the electrons can be in, in a helium atom, we use now this augmented equation where we added the z square there, where z represents the atomic number. So let's write that down. So z is the atomic number, and that is another way of saying the number of protons in the nucleus. So the atomic number is just simply the, the number of protons in the nucleus. For helium, the atomic number, of course, is... Two. All right, so what is the energy of the first level for helium? Well, E sub n is equal to 2 squared divided by 1 squared times minus 13.6 electron volts. And so that would be 52. That would be minus 54.4 electron volts. So when an electron resides in the innermost orbit of a helium atom and you want to completely set that electron free, you need it. 54.4 electron volts as opposed to only 13.6 electron volts for hydrogen. Now there's one caveat to all this. That is assuming there's only one electron present in the first place. That means the other electron, because remember helium normally has two electrons, the other electron is already removed. In other words, we can only deal with ionized helium. So this is singly ionized, ionized helium. What does that mean? That means we can only use these equations if the helium atom only has one electron left, the other one has already been removed through some process, so we're dealing with actually a simplified version of the helium atom. If you do the equations with two electrons in the orbit, in the innermost orbit, like it normally is, then that becomes much more complicated, well beyond this course right here. All right, so continuing on, how do we find the second level? Energy in the second orbit is equal to, that would be 2 squared divided by 2 squared times minus 13.6 electron volts. And so that would be ooh, exactly minus 13.6 electron volts, which is kind of interesting. The energy level of helium, singly ionized helium, of the second orbit is the same as the first orbit for hydrogen. Okay, finding the third level energy, so E sub 3 is equal to 2 squared divided by 3 squared, which is uh, not times times minus 13.6 electron volts. And for that, we're going to need our calculator. So we take 54.4 uh, divided by 9 equals, and that would be minus 6.04 electron volts. And E sub 4 is equal to 2 squared divided by 4 squared times minus 13.6 electron volts. And that would be 54.4 uh, divided by 16 and that gives us the minus 3.4 electron volts. All right, so now that we know the energies of the first four levels in helium, what if we try to find the wavelength of the photon released when an electron jumps from the fourth level down to the first level? So what would be the wavelength? So wavelength for the four to one jump is equal to question mark. Well, then we need to find the energy difference between those two. So there's the energy of the, well, I should have said this is one of the first level and the fourth level. So E from one to four, the energy difference, delta E, is equal to 54.4 minus the 3.4, which is 51 electron volts. All right. Now we go ahead and find the wavelength, and of course we find that by using the equation, the energy of a photon is equal to h times f, which is equal to h times c divided by lambda. So therefore lambda is equal to hc divided by the energy difference. All right, coming over here, we can then say that lambda for four to one jump is equal to hc divided by the delta energy for the difference between those two levels. And so this is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. Multiply times, oop, that's a kind of an odd symbol there. 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. 
divided by the energy difference, which we said was 51 electron volts. And then we'll multiply that, of course, times the conversion into joules, that many joules per one electron volt, so that the numbers come out right. Okay, 6.626 E34 minus times 3 E38 divided by 51 and divided by 1.6 E to the 19 minus equals, and it is equal to 24.4 nanometers. All right, that's a pretty short wavelength. That is pretty high energy ultraviolet radiation. And so if a electron jumps from the fourth level down to the first level, it will emit a photon of this wavelength. Likewise, if an electron resides in the first energy level, uh, what photon is required to make a jump to the fourth level? It requires a photon of this exact wavelength, of that exact energy, in order to make that jump possible. And that's how you deal with quantum jumps or electron jumps in the helium atom.